Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my review of the 1958 horror film, Horror of Dracula. Now, Horror of Dracula is the first entry in the popular Hammer Films Dracula series, starring Christopher Lee. This uh, first entry was directed by Terrence Fisher, who directed a lot of Hammer films. Uh, he not only directed this film, but he also directed, I believe, yeah, he directed The Revenge of Frankenstein, he directed the Hammer version of The Mummy, he directed their Phantom of the Opera, Curse of the Werewolf, The Gorgon, uh, Dracula, Prince of Darkness, Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed, Frankenstein the Monster from Hell, The Devil Rides Out, so, yeah, Terrence Fisher became a staple and a fixture of Hammer. And you can definitely see why. This is a very strong, capable, solid director. And uh, he definitely found a way to work fairly well with Hammer's notoriously low budgets. And he got good performances from his cast he really brought the gothic atmosphere and mood that Hammer Films became so renowned for. And he also showcased a fair number of nice camera tricks, uh, whether it was camera pans or zooms or angles. Uh, he definitely did make it so the camera flowed and moved well throughout each scene and wasn't really static or too uh, stodgy. Also, his direction did a great job setting up establishment shots and really stood out when it comes to sequences where it was trying to build suspense. The final confrontation between Van Helsing and Dracula at the end of this movie is a very tense, very suspenseful scene. And a big reason for that is how Terrence directed that sequence. Uh, his direction perfectly matched the frenzied, uh, frantic nature of that scene where it felt like it was a race against time. Van Helsing had to jump over the banister and stay one step ahead of Dracula. Otherwise, if Dracula got his hands on him, he could probably kill him in seconds, just break his neck like it's a twig. So Van Helsing is tr trying to avoid Dracula, and then he sees an opportunity, which is the curtain, and just pulls the curtain down, and now Dracula gets exposed to the sunlight. So, it's a really great sequence, and there's a few other sequences throughout the film that, that are equally as tense. As good as the direction is for Horror of Dracula, though, I would say the script by Jimmy Sangster is arguably even better. Jimmy Sangster did a really good job with this screenplay. A lot of the changes that were made in terms of combining certain characters into one or leaving certain characters from the novel out of the story entirely or moving uh, the setting from Transylvania to Germany or some of these other shifts when it comes to the narrative, were done to uh, work around the budget constraints of Hammer at the time, and also to make things a little more streamlined. And I honestly feel the changes, for the most part, were pretty brilliant. I thought they actually improved uh, the story in some aspects. It definitely did make it so... This didn't feel like it was just another version of the stage play or just an, a, a reboot or remake of the 1931 film by Todd Browning or a uh, new adaptation of Nosferatu. Like it, it felt like it was its own thing, it, its own different breed of vampire film or Dracula adaptation because of the differences in the narrative. 
instead of Harker arriving at uh, Dracula's castle in Transylvania, he arrives in Germany. He is not there to uh, help with real estate or anything. He's there as a librarian. He he initially comes across this young woman who asks him for her help, but then you find out when she starts burying her fangs that she's not who she appears to be, and she's a vampire, and she uh, wants more than what's in his pants. She also wants what's flowing inside his veins. And... Y- Harker isn't what he seems to be either because he's a vampire killer. He has arrived at his post as a librarian in this location because he's heard about Dracula and he wants to destroy him. So he finds the vampire bride alone in a coffin, kills her. Dracula is is understandably pissed off that his bride is now murdered and Dracula decides to take revenge on Harker and turns him and locks him up. And then the focus of the story then shifts to focusing on Van Helsing and Holmwood and Mia, um, Mina, my bad, Mina and Lucy. And the way that Van Helsing is written is excellent. I love the way that this character is set up and structured. And Holmwood is fine as well. Also is like connecting Holmwood to uh, either Mina or Lucy by uh, blood. I thought that was an interesting choice. And that's why you don't have Quincy or Dr. Seward. If, if, if I remember correctly, I don't think Dr. Seward is in this one. If he is, I, I completely forgot, which that that's that's my bad. But I don't think he is. I think Van Helsing is essentially being the Dr. Seward role. And yeah, uh, Arthur Holmwood and his wife, Mina. Yeah. He's also uh, the brother and sister-in-law of Lucy. So yeah, Homewood is actually connected to all of them. He's connected to Mina and Lucy, which adds a nice little different dynamic to things. Dracula uh, winds up uh, leaving Germany, and he wa- he uh, arrives. Actually, I don't think he, I don't think he left Germany. Yeah, he he just he just stays there and uh Arthur and Mina and Lucy they are around in the general area. They're they're all living in Germany and Dracula then starts putting his focus on Lucy <clears throat> because he wants to turn her so He can get revenge on uh, Harker because Lucy was to to be married to Harker. So they change things around where Harker, instead of marrying or being betrothed to Mina, he was uh, betrothed to Lucy. And I like that that, uh, change as well. It makes things more personal and interesting. So Mina... She winds up seeking Van Helsing's aid and helping Lucy, who's getting bit on the neck by Dracula. Lucy gets turned by Dracula. Uh, Van Helsing then has to kill Lucy uh, to save her soul. That's where it's kind of the same as some of the other adaptations. Then Van Helsing and Arthur uh, Holmwood, they team up to to go to uh, Dracula's castle to try to find Dracula. They do ultimately find Dracula uh, at at, um, his castle, and there's this chase, and then that leads to the confrontation in the finale between Van Helsing and Dracula, where Van Helsing gets the upper hand thanks to sunlight. Now, there were a few other differences that I might not have mentioned, but, you know, when it comes to those, you can see those when you see the film for yourself. But uh, 
overall, I did. I really liked this script. I thought it was a really different take on the Dracula mythos, and it took out some extraneous characters and really gave more intriguing backstories or depth to some of the characters and made them the focus. And I just like the way that Dracula is portrayed. I like the way the Van Helsing is portrayed. And I love the finale. It's simple, but it's very effective. I really love the the tension and the genuine uh, suspense that is um, brimming throughout uh, the, the film's finale. Now, as good as this script is, this film definitely would not be as effective without its stellar cast. I mean, Peter Cushing as Van Helsing, I would argue that his portrayal of this character is the quintessential Van Helsing. I like Anthony Hopkins in Bram Stoker's Dracula, but he hams it up a bit too much in that one. Uh, I like some other actors who have played the role, uh, Laurence Olivier in uh, Dracula from 1979, for instance, but Peter Cushing, he just embodies that role perfectly. And Peter Cushing himself is a bit of a badass because he he absolutely refused to not do his own stunts in the film's finale. When Van Helsing jumps over the banister, Peter Cushing, Peter Cushing did that shit for real. So that, that wasn't one of those things where, oh, a stunt double did it. And he had to go against the producer and the director and Hammer's wishes there because they didn't want him to get hurt. And he was like, fuck this. I'm doing it because I'm Peter fucking Cushing. I thought that was awesome. And of course, you have Christopher Lee as as the Count, as Dracula. It's definitely one of his finest and most memorable performances or roles he really provided more menace and intensity to the role as well as sexuality that wasn't really there with anyone else that portrayed the character up until this point. Uh, Christopher Lee really got Dracula. He didn't really look at Dracula as being a, a character that relished in being a vampire he looked at Dracula as being a sad figure, someone who was looking for uh, an opportunity to to die and to end this torment, but was unable to, and was just constantly living with the reality of being this thing, this undead, blood-sucking being. And I feel that did add a certain pathos and depth to his performance that I, I don't feel was really there with other performers. No offense to Bella Lugosi or some other people who play Dracula until Christopher Lee, but you just didn't really have that extra pathos. And he only had like 16 lines of dialogue, but he was so good and he was such a striking presence that he more than made his mark despite having so little when it comes to dialogue. Uh, you also have Michael Goh, who you might recognize uh, from Batman. Uh, the, he would go on to play Alfred, uh, Bruce Wayne's butler in the Tim Burton and uh, Joe Schumacher Batman films decades later. It was, it was quite a trip to see a young Michael Goh, to be perfectly honest. And he was great. He was really good as Arthur Holmwood. Uh, Melissa Stribling was fine as Mina. So was Carol Marsh. Uh, both performances weren't what I would call spectacular, but they were serviceable and decent enough. Uh, John John Van Eysen as Jonathan Harker. Eh, I, I don't know what it is. For some reason, I have yet to see... Well, actually, the, the 1979 film, I would say, had a good Jonathan Harker. But... In all of the Dracula films that I've seen, I've yet to really come across a truly great Jonathan Harker performance. For some reason, they've always been either average or way below that. And there are a few other people, like I guess Dr. Seward is in this, 
but he's barely in the film and doesn't really have a lot to do. So that's why I didn't really mention his character that much. It's played by Charles Lloyd Pack. But uh, yeah, it's it's a good it's a good cast. It also features some nice cinematography by Jack Asher that tries to get the most atmosphere and and feel and creepiness out of limited sets and a limited budget. Uh, the editing is also pretty fine by Bill Lenny. The music by James Bernard is 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 it's just kind of man like there's not nothing about the score that is that memorable or that strong but it's not a net negative either it's just not a score that you want to sink your teeth into again and again so yeah i i I did i really did enjoy horror of dracula it makes me want to definitely check out the other hammer dracula films sometime in the future because i had a lot of fun with this one i really liked the script I thought Christopher Lee and uh, Peter Cushing were just a really great pair. And I thought Terrence Fisher did a fantastic job directing it and went by at a good pace. I mean, it wasn't even, I don't even think it was even an hour and a half. Like, yeah, it's 82 minutes. So it goes by at a relatively quick pace. Uh, The way that the script is written just continuously has things happening or it's building up to things happening it never really feels like it's just sitting there uh and you're just waiting for something uh to occur so yeah overall definitely would recommend this one uh even if you're not a fan of 50s horror because uh this 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 is a this is a really solid uh example of horror from this time period that still manages to be full of suspense and thrills, despite the fact that you can't quite go for the jugular just yet. But anyway, uh, that's my uh, opinion of Horror of Dracula. And until next time, I'll see you later. See ya.